Built to connect towns between Pittsburgh and Erie, Perry Highway was Western Pennsylvania's first modern north-south roadway. In 1928, it became part of the designated U.S. Route 19 that stretches from Erie, Pennsylvania to Bradenton, Florida. In this program, you will see landmarks that dot Allegheny County's 14-mile stretch of historic Perry Highway from Westview to Warrendale. Sections of Perry Highway follow the early Native American Benango Path that once connected the Forks of the Ohio to Franklin, Pennsylvania and Lake Erie. In use during the 18th century French and Indian War, the path came to be known as the Franklin Road. Shown in this 1812 map as the Road to Harmony, it was nothing more than a rough wagon path. During the War of 1812, supplies for the American fleet on Lake Erie were hauled from Pittsburgh over the Franklin Road. More than a century later, the road would be renamed in honor of the fleet's commanding officer, Oliver Hazard Perry. Travelers once shared this rough dirt road with livestock, drovers, and farmers hauling wagon loads of fresh produce to Pittsburgh markets. Taverns and inns were built to accommodate both man and beast. This 1843 map shows the Franklin Road near what is now the McCandless Ross Township line. Three Degree Road appears on the right as the state road to Butler. Perrysville's McAleer Tavern is shown in the lower left. In the upper half is Goods Tavern, which opened in 1796 opposite what is now Swickley Oakmont Road. The Four Mile House was once a familiar site near the city line. The log section was believed to date from 1810 and was where the Ivory family began welcoming travelers circa 1820. The larger stone addition was built 10 years later. The building stood until the 1960s when it was raised in preparation for the construction of Interstate 279. This is a 1920s view of Perry Highway looking south toward the city line, with Ivory Avenue on the left and the Four Mile House on the right. This was the original Westview section of Ross Township, named for the expansive westward view over the Ohio River. The traffic lights are at the Cemetery Lane intersection. The opening of the Westview oil and gas field in the late 1880s, along with the construction of streetcar lines, brought rapid growth to the area. Farmland quickly disappeared under residential development, and in 1904, Westview Borough was incorporated a short distance further north from here. The largest standpipe in Pennsylvania stood next to Westview's Town Hall on nearby Ridgewood Avenue. The landmark tower drew water from wells under the Ohio River and was used by real estate developers to promote the idea of germ-free water in the new community. Westview Borough was created from several farms, including Schwitter's Sweet Home Dairy, where prospective home buyers were promised a refreshing glass of milk during their visit. The one-time neighborhood of homes and businesses near Cemetery Lane included the Four Mile House, the Westview Hotel, and Keating House. Shown here is the Westview Hotel, known for its Westview Driving Park, which was a half-mile racetrack. The most famous of the old roadhouses was Keating's, which sat opposite the Westview Hotel. Widely known for his chicken and waffle dinners, Joe Keating welcomed visitors from 1845 until his death in 1895. The 75-foot-long dining room was a popular gathering spot for the city's civic and business leaders, as well as day-trippers enjoying carriage and sleigh rides. The landmark Keating House was destroyed by fire in 1912. 
opened circa 1830, the five-mile house faced Perry Highway at the corner of Bellevue Road until it was destroyed by fire in 1970. A service station now occupies the site. This was the White House Tavern. It's now an apartment building next to Perrysville's hardware store. In 1796, Balthasar Good opened the first known inn on the old Franklin Road, opposite what is now Swickley Oakmont Road. In 1857, his grandson opened the Kuhn Hotel and racetrack on the same property. The hotel, which once served as Perrysville's post office and election house, stood at the corner of Perry Highway and Three Degree Road until 1927, when it was replaced by a Treesdale Farms fruit market, a Sparkle Market grocery store, and a Plaid Land Saving Stamp Redemption Center followed before being replaced with the BP gas station that currently occupies the site. The Eleven Mile House, also known as the Pine Creek Hotel, stood in the Pine Creek section of McCandless until 1951 when it was raised for the construction of the McKnight Road link to Perry Highway. Further north, in the Wexford section of McCandless Township, stood another longtime roadhouse. Opened in 1844, it stood for almost 150 years at the corner of Reichold Road and Perry Highway. This photo shows the historic inn when it was known as the Perry Park Hotel. The Wigley family purchased the hotel in 1944 and showed free movies in the dining room on Friday and Saturday nights. In 1948, they purchased a large screen television for customers to watch the Joe Lewis, Jersey Joe Walcott heavyweight title fight broadcast from Yankee Stadium. The DuMont Network, which owned a television station in Pittsburgh, planned to fly a plane carrying an antenna over the city so that the signal could be picked up by the station. On the day of the big fight, the oversized screen was set up in the hotel parking lot where more than 300 excited fans had gathered. The fighters were seen entering the ring before the signal went dead. Built in 1876, the Wexford Hotel was purchased by the Cole family in 1901 and continues to operate as Cole's Tavern. In 1946, during a dispute between labor unions as to who would represent brewery workers, the roof was firebombed with a third floor destroyed by flames. It is said that by the end of the day, neighbors had rebuilt the roof. Until his death in 1879, George Warren operated a roadhouse in the Brush Creek section of Marshall Township, where he welcomed both man and beast, charging a penny a head to accommodate livestock in his field. In 1907, Brush Creek was renamed Warrendale in honor of the Warren family. The old red brick inn stood until 1950. In 1886, John Ulrich purchased the Warren family home and opened it as the Brush Creek Hotel. Throughout his life, George Warren never trusted banks and had a habit of hiding money. Following Warren's death, his family found some of the hidden cash, but always suspected there might be more. During Ulrich's remodel of the building, a stack of banknotes was found behind a loose board which Ulrich turned over to the family after Warren's son sued in court. The Brush Creek Inn continues to operate as both a bar and restaurant. Travel on the narrow and rutted Franklin Road was difficult. In 1849, a group of local businessmen was granted a charter to build a plank road for which they would be allowed to collect tolls. The road consisted of a single eight-foot lane of three-inch thick hemlock planks. While planning the road, 
James Gibson famously said, the more curves, the longer the road, and the longer the road, the more tolls. As a result, the new road snaked its way through the farmlands of northern Allegheny County. Completed in 1851, the new Perrysville Plank Road ran seven miles between the city line and a point opposite what is now the Pines Plaza Shopping Center in Ross Township. Other companies soon extended planking as far north as Zillianople and Harmony. By the late 1800s, all of the roads leading north from the city were toll roads in need of repair. During the 1890s, a push was made to open and improve the privately owned roads. In 1903, Allegheny County began purchasing the Perrysville Plank Road and making much needed improvements. The road was turned over to the state in 1933 as improvements continued to be made. This 1936 aerial view of McCandless Township shows a newly straightened stretch of Perry Highway alongside its original twists and turns. Highland Road and Harmony Parkway enter from the left. St. John's Lutheran Church and Cumberland Road are in the upper right corner. Toll gates were needed for the newly built Plank Road. The first one stood at the city line on Perry Hilltop. The second was near the Ross Westview line between Cemetery Lane and Bellevue Road. Known as Swans, this was a covered toll gate where the collector's family lived. Other gates stood in Ross Township at Rochester Road and at a point opposite what is now Pines Plaza Shopping Center. Further north, a gate once stood at Pine Creek in McCandless Township. Until being replaced by the Harmony Line Electric Railway in 1908, mail coaches made daily runs on the Perrysville Plank Road. Coaches left the city in the morning before making the return trip later the same day. This photo was taken in the village of Wexford next to what is now the Wexford Antique Center. One enduring Plank Road landmark is West Views or Shoe Bend. To avoid the steepness of the original road, the bend was constructed to allow a gradual descent from the Bellevue Road hilltop into the valley below. Pictured inside the bend is Brandt's Garage, which opened in 1929 but now houses other businesses. Opposite the old garage is the Betsy Ann Chocolate Factory and Store. Bessie Halsell began the business on Pittsburgh's north side and for many years supplied Horn's department store with her chocolate candies. In 1962, production was moved into this former heating and cooling building on the Horseshoe Bend. In 1968, Mrs. Helsel sold the company to the Paris family, but remained for a year while she taught the family chocolate making. The business continues to operate out of this local landmark. Next to the Betsy Ann building was the Wright Pontiac dealership, which opened in 1927 when the Wright brothers purchased an even earlier dealership. Shown is the 1952 remodel that is still a familiar sight. The Wrights remained in Westview until 1970 when they moved to a new Perry Highway location in Pine Township. At the foot of the Horseshoe Bend is the valley where Westview Park opened in May 1906. Streams were dammed to create the five-acre Lake Placid next to which the famous Wooden Dips roller coaster was built in 1910. After the park closed in 1977, the property was converted into a shopping plaza. This is the Sipke Plickle family of Franklin Township visiting the park on Memorial Day 1919. Notice how everyone dressed in Sunday best. Streetcar fare from the city to the park was five cents. Stables for horses and buggies were also provided. 
Westview Park was known for Danceland, which began as an open-air dancing pavilion. In June 1964, KQV Radio sponsored a show that featured a little-known British band called the Rolling Stones, which was on its first U.S. tour. Perched on a hilltop overlooking the Perry Highway, just north of Westview, is the Highland Presbyterian Church. The original section was built in 1836 to replace an older log structure that was built circa 1800. As in many churches at the time, the 1836 building featured two doors, one for men and one for women. Until 1925, the two-room Perrysville School stood next to the Highland Church Cemetery. It will always be remembered as the place where the Biddle brothers and Mrs. Sofel rested for a few hours following the brothers' ill-fated escape from the Allegheny County Jail. The Biddles were imprisoned in the county jail where Mrs. Sofel lived as the warden's wife. Leaving her husband and young children behind, Mrs. Sofel helped a brother's escape in January 1902. Traveling to Ben Avon by trolley, the unlikely trio tramped over snow-covered Jack's Run Road before reaching the Perrysville Plank Road, where they were seen on the Horseshoe Bend. They continued walking north before breaking into the Perrysville School, where they spent part of the evening to rest and warm themselves. Later that night, the group made its way to the White House Tavern, where it purchased ham sandwiches before stealing a horse and sleigh from the Schwartz Brothers Three Degree Road Farm, adjacent to what later became Northway Mall. The Biddles and Mrs. Sofel traveled through darkness to Bakerstown, where they followed Route 8 into Butler. A shootout with the Butler County Sheriff's Posse ensued near Prospect. The brothers died from their wounds and were buried in Pittsburgh's Calvary Cemetery. The story of the escape was headline news, and curiosity seekers flocked to the South Side Funeral Home for a glimpse of Ed and Jack Biddle. But the undertaker was forced to close the caskets since visitors were cutting off hair, buttons, and cloth as souvenirs. During the shootout, Mrs. Sofel attempted suicide, but a metal corset stave deflected the bullet, saving her life. She spent two years in Western Penitentiary before moving to Pittsburgh's north side, where she worked as a seamstress. The sleigh used in the escape is now in the Heinz History Center collection. This is an early view of Perrysville looking north on Perry Highway from St. John's Lutheran Church. St. John's was founded in 1867 with 15 members. Services were conducted in German and were held in the afternoon, allowing farm families time for morning chores. Catholic families in the Perrysville district once had to travel to either Wexford or Pittsburgh to attend Mass. So, in 1864, land was purchased in the heart of the village for a Catholic church. St. Teresa's was dedicated three years later. In 1935, St. Teresa's original brick church was replaced with this limestone edifice, which is now the Great Hall Special Events Center. Known for its outdoor dancing pavilion, the Pines Supper Club operated between 1916 and 1951 near the Ross McCandless Township line. Big bands once entertained at the Pines. 
the Pines Plaza Shopping Center opened on the site in June 1956 with W.T. Grant's Five and Dime and the Loblaws and Thoroughfare grocery stores as anchor tenants. Before Northland Public Library opened in the fall of 1968, library service was provided by a county bookmobile that made weekly visits to the Pines Plaza parking lot. Service began in 1957 with Pines Plaza quickly becoming the bookmobile's busiest stop. Because of the area's high demand for library services, local municipalities banded together to create Northland Public Library. Situated next to the Pines Plaza Shopping Center is an office building that was once the White Mansion Supper Club famous for illicit gambling in its posh second-floor gaming rooms. A 1938 raid resulted in all of the gaming equipment and furniture being burned by police. Another longtime landmark on Old Perry Highway is the former S.B. Elementary School that opened in 1928. The four-room school was built on the S.B. farm close to the Harmony Lines Highland Station. This 1929 photo shows the school and newly built Highland Road that connected Ingomar with Perry Highway. The enlarged building is now used by the Pittsburgh Chinese Church. Ken's Cabin was once a familiar site at the corner of Perry Highway and Ingomar Road. The family originally spent summers camping on the property, but soon built a house and snack bar to serve motorists in search of meals. From Ingomar Road, Perry Highway begins its descent into the Pine Creek section of McCandless. At the corner of Pine Creek Road was the Pine Valley Restaurant, which burned in 1957. Within months, it reopened as both a restaurant and roller rink. In 1961 and 1962, St. Alexis parishioners attended Mass in the roller rink while their church was built nearby. Over the years, the building has housed various businesses. Perry Highway passed through the Pine Creek Hamlet as it wound its way north toward Wexford. Operating out of the former North Hills Stables building, Pine Creek's Perry Lane Nursery opened as the North Hills YMCA in 1956. With an added gymnasium and outdoor pool, the Y remained in Pine Creek until 2006 when it relocated to a newly built facility in Franklin Park Borough. A Walgreens pharmacy now occupies the site. Construction of the McKnight Road link to Perry Highway in the early 1950s cut through the heart of Pine Creek. Views from the McKnight Road overpass show how much Pine Creek has changed. The service station in the black and white photo is remembered as the longtime Sweet Licks ice cream stand that stood opposite the YMCA. This undated photo shows the original Perry Highway climbing Pine Creek Hill towards Wexford. The new Perry Highway in Newhart Boulevard had not yet been built. The Wexford House Nursing Home now sits on the bend in the center of the photo. At one time, an unnamed east-west Native American path passed through the valley, connecting the Allegheny and Ohio rivers. Early travelers followed Pine Creek from its mouth on the Allegheny River to the headwaters of Big Swickley Creek in Franklin Park, from where they then followed the creek to the Ohio River. In 1919, Allegheny County created a series of photos 
that showed the Wexford section of Perry Highway before making needed improvements the following year. This early Pine Creek Hill residence was later converted into Wygand's Tavern and is today Billy's Roadhouse. This 1919 photo looks north on the Wexford Flats near the present North Allegheny Senior High School. Utility poles, fence posts, and trees were whitewashed to mark the road. The old Weller Hotel stood at the corner of Reichold Road and was known more recently as the Perry Park Hotel and High Tide Restaurant and Bar. The former Wendy's restaurant once stood on the site. Chris Weller not only owned this hotel, but at different times during his career operated Westview's Five Mile House and Perrysville's White House where it was he who served the Biddle brothers during their legendary prison escape. Weller was farming 122 acres on both sides of Perry Highway when, in 1933, he allowed the newly formed North Hills Polo Club to build a polo field next to the hotel, where the Barrel Auto Dealership now stands. Spectators sat on parked cars along the highway to watch Sunday afternoon matches. Polo was popular throughout the 1930s, with 10 area teams competing, but at the outbreak of World War II, most teams disbanded. The Weller Farmhouse stood on the opposite side of Perry Highway near Richard Road. In time, a McDonald's franchise occupied the corner. Until closing during World War II, the Eskimo Inn was a popular spot on the Perry Highway. Truck drivers stopped by for lunch, but in the afternoon it became a favorite team hangout, featuring the only soda fountain between Perrysville and Zillianople. This early postcard looks south over the village of Wexford. Cole's Hotel is on the right and the general store is on the left. Both still stand as Cole's Tavern and the Wexford Antique Center. This part of Pine Township was first known as Shaver's Corners. Shown is the original Perry Highway that was renamed Church Road. This is a 1919 view of Perry Highway looking north in Wexford. Cole's Hotel and Stable are on the left, and the General Store is on the right. The building between the two housed the North Pittsburgh Telephone Exchange and Magistrate's Office. St. Alphonsus Roman Catholic Church has overlooked Perry Highway since 1840. One of the first priests to travel from Pittsburgh to say Mass in Wexford was Father John Newman, who was canonized in 1977. Franklin Park's first Catholic church was named in his honor. The third St. Alphonsus Church and first school were both built in 1889. The school is shown on the far right. Between 1946 and 1950, McAfee's Convict Inn was known not only for the decorative rooftop chain gang, but also for seating diners inside jail cells. The owner transformed this quirky landmark into a traditional restaurant while building the adjacent Wexford Starlight Drive-In Movie Theater that opened in 1950. Both the restaurant and the drive-in were eventually replaced by the Northway Christian Church. Warrendale grew on the old Perry Highway where the Brush Creek Hotel and Stable Building have stood for 140 years. The opening of the oil field in the 1880s attracted newcomers to the area, as did the construction of the Harmony Line Electric Railway years later.
During the Second World War, the draft board met at the Marshall Township School. It was here young men leaving for military service boarded buses for the trip into Pittsburgh. Built in 1928, the former school is now an office building. Allegheny County's Old Ferry Highway ends at an Interstate 79 embankment. In 1952, the section of highway between Wexford and Cranberry Township in Butler County was rebuilt with the Warrendale section relocated west of its original path. The former two-lane highway was renamed Northgate Drive and continues to serve as the Warrendale Hamlet's main street. For Northland Public Library, this is Debbie Raybould. Thank you for viewing Old Perry Highway Landmarks, Westview to Warrendale. For more North Hills history and photos, be sure to visit www.northlandlocalhistory.org.